Ian, so good to have you in, my friend. Hope you're having a good day. Yeah, it's going well. How about you guys? Hey, we're well, man. We, we're excited to have you. We've got some really good stuff to get to, including a, a little baseball note that I forgot. You asked me about this on Monday. I said, yeah, let's do it. And as soon as I hung up from you on the show, I went, oh, crap, I forgot to get that Albert Pujols question to Ian. So let's talk about that before we hit some gold nuggets. First things first, Albert's closing in on 700 career home runs. Now, he has made it clear. He is done after this year. He could be at 699. He's like, numbers don't mean anything to me. I'm, I am done. I, I tend to believe Albert on that. So what does he have that round now? 693? Yeah, 693. He hit a, another home run on Monday night, which I teach you about. But, so at the t- on Monday, this seemed a little more impressive that he had five home runs in his past five games, six in his past ten. But we're still talking about five home runs in his past ten games going into tonight's play. So he's got uh, 11 home runs on the season. That's his highest total in two years. 693 now, so he's seven away from 700. He can pass uh, Alex Rodriguez. I believe Alex Rodriguez has 696. The most home runs he's hit in a month this season is six in this month of August. No other month this season has he hit more than three. So with six weeks left in the season... He does have a shot at 700. I mean, he's got three uh, multi-homer games this year. The competition, you know, he's going to face a lot of the Reds and the Nationals and the Pirates, the Cubs, the, the Padres and Dodgers are mixed in there as well. So he might be facing some pretty bad pitching. And I would imagine the Cardinals would have him in the lineup more than, uh, than they have been. He's been sort of a part-time player, a designated hitter. And I imagine the Cardinals will have him in the lineup more. Um, if he can hold up over the next uh, six weeks of the season. Uh, so I think he's got a shot. Yeah, uh, I mean, You bring up a good question. If he's at 698 or something like that, uh, will, will he come back next season? I don't think he will. I, I take him at his word that he is done after this season, and if he doesn't get the 700 home runs, then so be it. You think he's going to make it happen there, Mike Gore? Well, boy, um, I didn't think so a month ago, but he's certainly he's on a great surge right now, and from, uh, you know maybe he's found a little fountain of youth here. And Ian brings up a good point. You know, some of the teams he's he's going to be facing uh, when the rosters get up, he's going to he's you know he's not going to be seeing you know some of the best pitchers in the league, so he might have a shot. Cardinals are are doing a pretty good job in that division, and so hopefully the Cardinals can can take control of the Central Division, and and it can just be about Albert. The you know the last two weeks. Obviously, the, the Cardinals aren't going to catch the Mets or the Dodgers. I think they're going to be the third the, the third seed, and they'll play either the Dodgers. I mean, they'll play either the um, Mets or the Braves in the, um, in, the Nas- in the National League playoffs, the NLDS and stuff. So hopefully, you know, that's, you know, some things are pointing that way. But by the same token, uh, he's only got 11 home runs this year, too. He's not the player he was. Obviously, he once was. And um, so I think it's the odds are against it, but but they're a little better than they were two weeks ago. Uh, indeed, good way to put it. So we'll see. Uh, I'm pulling for him. I've always been a big Pujols fan. I mean, we'll see where that goes. He just looks right in that Cardinals uniform, doesn't he? Doesn't he? As opposed to Angels or Dodgers. Yeah, it's just I, I yeah. think the home cooking is really working for him, and he's he's finding his groove. Let's hope he can he can keep that going. Ian Castleberry with the Wise Guys. Now we get into our NFL Gold Nuggets presented by DC Creaseman Jewelers. All right, uh, Ian, after losing the starting uh, quarterback job to Baker Mayfield, could Sam Darnold be on the trading block? I don't think so. I mean, it's something maybe that the Panthers should look into. There are plenty of teams that could use. Sam Darnold uh, as a backup. Uh, there, I've seen some reports maybe that Tampa Bay would be interested. Maybe the Lions, uh, the the Cowboys, the Texans, even the Patriots. But the big problem, and uh, this is something that happened with Baker Mayfield uh, before the Panthers acquired him. Sam Darnold's getting paid a lot of money this season. He's getting paid like a starting quarterback. He's going to make uh, almost nineteen million dollars. Uh, you know, with the Panthers picking up. Darnold's fifth-year option, at the time they probably felt like they had no choice. Right now, that looks like a terrible decision. But uh, unless the, the Panthers are willing to eat you know, maybe $13, $14 million of that, and they have $21 million of cap room, they could. But that's what they're going to have to do, I think, to even have a chance of trading it to another team. Yeah, it, it's, you know, Seattle's a team that's popped up, guys. Uh, in conversations because you got Drew Locke and you've got Geno Smith. Neither one is wowing Seahawks fans. Not that necessarily Sam Darnold would, 
but you know Sam Donald to be someone new, and and uh, we'll wait and see on that. In the meantime, you know it's funny. I was talking with DC today about this, and man, he wants him to stay as a. He said he, well, he'd be a great backup. You know, suddenly every Panthers fans would love uh, Sam Darnold when he's a backup, uh, and that's you know that's what it. I agree with you. I don't I don't think the trigger is going to be pulled on this one, and because and really the only team that would need a, a starting quarterback immediately would would be Seattle. I mean, all signs are pointing to uh, the Seahawks, but as you point out, the money there is is a stumbling block, and I don't know if the Panthers are going to want to go there and just hang on to, to um, Darnold for one more season. Well. We'll see how it shakes out. All right, Ian, what do you make of UFC founder Dana White saying he brokered a deal with Tom Brady and the Raiders? Brady was ready to go to the Raiders. I think Gronkowski was, you know, maybe going to be following if that went down. But John Gruden nicks the deal. Shoop's not so sure how this went down. If if it, you know, maybe Dana White, he can't imagine the Raiders allowing Dana White to come in and start negotiating all of that. And, and, and actually, while John is not necessarily a John Gruden fan, he worked for, for Gruden, but he doesn't blame John Gruden here. What is your takeaway on this? Yeah, it's not difficult to imagine that Dana White inserted himself and took it upon himself to, uh, to make this happen. Uh, I mean, it's worth pointing out Brady and Gronkowski were both free agents at the time, so this wasn't a situation where they had to work out a trade and suddenly Dana White's trying to figure out, you know, how to make salaries match or whatever. <laughs> uh, I don't know what the Raiders' salary cap situation was at the time, but it sounded like he was uh, Dana White was the big advocate for the Raiders. Uh, if, if you listen to him, Brady uh, was on board. He was looking at houses in the Las Vegas area. Now, it should be pointed out, too, that Dana White wasn't going to go public with this until – he appeared on this alternate telecast for uh, UFC 278, right. which was uh, hosted uh, by the Gronkowski brothers, sort of a Manning cast for UFC. And it was Rob Gr- Gronkowski who kind of egged Dana White on to tell this story. And, you know, I, it's fine to tell now, right? Because obviously it didn't happen and Gronkowski retired and Brady is staying uh, with the Bucks. But, yeah, I could see Dana White going, you know, taking it upon himself to do this, and then John Gruden saying, for whatever reason, whether it's because he didn't think Brady was a good fit, he still believed in David Carr, maybe he just resented somebody on the outside trying to make a football move for his team. Uh, there's a variety of reasons uh, Gruden could have killed this. But, uh, yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a, an intriguing story, certainly. What do you make of that, Michael? Well, it, it sounds crazy, but if any franchise – would be using the head of the UFC to help negotiate Tom Brady. It'd be the Raiders now, wouldn't it? I mean, if any franchise, if this was going to happen, uh, happen be it, it would have to be the Raiders. And there's probably, you know, probably not a ton of truth to it, but there's probably something to it. And uh, it is doing what uh, it's designed to do. We're talking about it. Yeah, obviously. And Dana White, right? You know, he's getting that publicity and, and all that. And, yeah, of course, you know, when it says Gruden blew it up, and, you know, and Shoop said, well, I could certainly understand that. It's like, you know, I mean, it's, you know, Gruden, Gruden is, you know, for whatever reason, you know, he was committed to David Carr for starters. But I think there's maybe a bit of a resentment that someone like Dana White would be involved in this, which is, yeah, it, it, as you said, he inserted himself into this. But, man, oh, man, can you imagine Brady if that went through and Brady was a, a Raider? Oh, my goodness. Uh, that. That would have been bonkers. Ticket sales through the roof in, in Vegas. All right, Ian Castleberry with the Wise Guys, uh, presented by David Creaseman and D.C. Creaseman Jewelers via the D.C. Creaseman Jewelers. Wise Lines. We're staying with Brady, and, and Ian, if we can get a little TMZ with you for a couple of minutes here. It was odd that Brady or the Bucks didn't just announce that, you know, when the media picked up the story, like, why didn't they just say, yeah, he's uh, he's on a, a person, you know, vacation with his family. It was planned when he was retired. It just seems odd. The, the reason after, what, 10 days or so, they finally come out with this this release saying, yeah, this is what Tom was doing. It was a planned family vacation. That's not a big deal. It's like, why did they have to wait 10 days to announce that? And it just makes me wonder, is there something maybe a little deeper to this, maybe more than a family vacation commitment? Because I know Giselle's not real thrilled that Tom's playing again. Right. Maybe uh, that has something to do with it. I- Maybe it was a privacy issue, too. I mean, did, did Brady want it known that he and his family were uh, taking a trip to the Bahamas, and then you have paparazzi and, or whatever going down to the Bahamas to try to snap photos? or, or you, Who knows how much the, those images uh, would have been worth? Or people with their cell phones now, you know, trying to take 
video. I mean, I, I don't know what where they would have stayed at a resort if it was private. Sure, I mean, they could have just uh, said he's on a sort of he's so on a vacation. I, I, yeah. So, for, from a privacy aspect, this checks out with me that maybe he just Brady didn't want this publicized, and then also, you know, just the the look, the optics, uh, if you will, of, of taking a vacation to the Bahamas while all of his teammates are, are grinding it out, sweating it out in training camp. But uh, the the Bucks coming out and saying, well, this was prearranged, whatever it is, it, it, was, it was already arranged, and, and we don't have a problem with it. We knew this was going to happen. I mean, I don't know what the machinations are as far as planning a trip like this so far in advance, if this was something that was planned back when Brady w- was initially retired. But I do agree with you that if the Buccaneers had to do it all over again, that it would have been better just to say, look, he, you know, this was a, a prearranged trip to the Bahamas. We know how that sounds. Ha, 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 guys. Yeah. But th- th- this is what he's doing. He's Tom Brady. He's going to – he's probably uh, spending more time on football than Giselle would have liked on that trip anyway, right, with an iPad playbook and going <laughs> over things. That we know he's going to be prepared. He's Tom Brady. Exactly. And, you know, look, they didn't have to tell where Tom Brady was vacation. It's just like, look, he made a commitment to his family on something, and he's unable, you know, he's going to miss the first few weeks of um, the preseason. Nothing wrong with that. It just feels like they were hiding something, Mike, and that's just, I don't know. I still have a weird feeling about it. Uh, well, Tom Brady, we're talking about things that aren't about football again <laughs> stuff. So Here we what, go, else Ian. <laughs> what else is new? So, uh, Stand uh, by but we'll see. No, we'll just see how this plays out. If uh, you know, if Tom Brady gets off to a slow start or something's not right, they'll, oh they'll point God. back to the they'll be point back to the Bahama trip um, or whatever it is. It's just strange. I mean, it's just it's just strange, and it's just you have to there have to be the back of your mind wonder a little bit. Is is Tom Brady really all in on this season? Is this really what he wants? Did he really did, did he rush back from retirement? too quick or something it just it just opens up a lot of questions be interesting to see how he plays uh, this season and uh, no Tampa's had some injuries in the preseason and uh, this will be just uh, fascinating to watch uh, Tom Brady and, and give us more to talk about when well, it comes to Tom Brady here's the thing Mike Off the field and, and Ian you know right now Ken Ken Jung who's on the uh, the Fox show the mass singer he's one of the judges they had they're pre-taping this and they were he was saying it's you know whoever it was that was this segment that it was Tom Brady, that it was Tom Brady. And Ian, I want to ask you, you know, it's one thing to have time off for personal reasons, but this is the biggest rumor right now that seems to be taking over is that, well, maybe he was taping an episode of The Masked Singer, which to me, that's not personal, that's promotional. I know he signed the big deal with Fox, but that's when he's retired for good. I'm not really sure that's the reason why, but what do you make of those rumors popping up? Because it seems to be gaining legs among some of the media and, and certainly some fans. Well, uh, as you mentioned, Ken Jeong brought this up, but where this started originally was somebody speculating on Reddit, saying, hey, I, I wonder if Tom Brady is recording The Masked Singer because the show is taping right now. He's not in training camp. The, the calendar dates and all that check out. We know that part of Brady's agreement, contract with Fox, is not just broadcasting, that he's going to be doing promotional stuff, spokesperson, maybe appearing on Fox programming. So it seems plausible that maybe he could be doing the Mass Singer while he was gone. You know, in some ways, I almost feel like this, I think you and I are on the opposite here, Pat, in that I almost feel like it would be better if that's what he was doing rather than taking a family really? vacation in the Bahamas. Why is that? Family time, blah, blah, blah. But at least you could say, well, hey, this is sort of a contractual obligation uh, I have with Fox. I'm going to miss some training camp. We're all going to have a big laugh about it. See, to me, it's like, doesn't that contract begin when he retires? Like, you know, that's when all that, right. I, I think. So, yeah, it's just, you're right. We are on the opposite ends of this, but it's like, Dude, that would be, I know it's Brady. I give Brady a lot of leeway because he's Tom Brady. He's earned it. Six Super Bowls. The dude's always shown up. But to me, that would be a little too much to be actually away recording a show. I mean, I think his teammates, his teammates aren't going to care either way. He's Tom Brady. But this has just been really an odd sense. And Mike, I know you've always said like, ah, you know, Brady likes this kind of stuff. And I'm like, well, I don't know if now I'm beginning to think, you know what? Maybe you got, you're onto something. Well, uh, yes, uh, 
You know, Fox, uh, th- this is something that Fox would do, though. You, you think of when Fox first got the baseball contract, Ian, back in uh, the mid-'90s, and, and there'd be the opening game of the World Series, and Joe Buck would say, you know, here's Paul Neal for the uh, you know for uh, for the Yankees uh, batting off, and, and there you see the cast of Melrose Place yes, uh, at, uh, at Yankee Stadium. Don't forget Melrose Place each Thursday at, uh, at 9 o'clock. And, right. and then here's Bernie Williams, and there you see the cast, uh, you know, Gossip Beverly Girl. Hills 90201, <laughs> and don't forget they're on Wednesdays at 9. So. Right, Gossip Girls run network, but no, I used to, uh, that used to drive McClement nuts when we did the show together. He'd be like, I don't know, you know, there's truth to that. It was like half that cast. Hadn't even seen a baseball game. And I know Bill used to get mad at Joe Buck. Trust me, Joe Buck didn't enjoy doing that. No, ball. He's exactly. Stuff, yeah, you, know? you, gotta, you, gotta, you get tied into that stuff. You're like, ah, crap. Okay. But he's a pro. As uh, Ian Castleberry joins the Wise Guys NFL Gold Nuggets feature presented by David Creaseman and D.C. Creaseman Jewelers. Finally, Ian, your Lions are uh, being featured on Hard Knocks. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. Three episodes in the can. I think they do four total. What, what's your early review of the first three episodes? I haven't watched Hard Knocks in a while, so I guess that what it took was my team being on Hard Knocks. I'm curious what, what other fans think about this, too. I mean, obviously I'm thrilled that the Lions are on there. It, it, it's good exposure for the team, good exposure for the organization, for the city of Detroit. But it's been lacking a little bit in star power, and I'm wondering uh, how uh, listeners feel about this, because it, you're not seeing the stars of the team being profiled. You're seeing backup players largely. Like this week's episode, uh, focused on an offensive lineman who may or may not make the team. Uh, David Blau, uh, the quarterback who, who uh, coach Shoup, of course at Purdue, uh, you know, he, he may not make the team. He's been getting a lot of airtime. Uh, really the only star player that's been getting airtime is, uh, Aiden Hutchinson, uh, the Michigan defensive end who was the number two overall pick uh, by the Lions. And, and he's been, a star on there too but uh, I, I do wonder if some fans are kind of looking and thinking well there's really not too much star power in, in this season of hard knocks but i think going in the thought was well the star is going to be dan campbell right he's the head coach that's getting all this attention everybody likes Deuce staley uh the running back coach assistant head coach has also been very entertaining so far this season um have they focused uh, see i think the reason the lions got this was because of dan campbell how much is he is, is he being profiled in in, in this uh, particular series 100 oh, percent okay. dan campbell is the reason he's all but is he, uh, is i mean he all there's over also it? as you guys know there are some rules that teams can't turn down hard knocks and the lions were one of three teams that couldn't turn down an invitation i think the jets and the panthers were the other two teams that couldn't have turned down hard knocks if that, that's what HBO uh, and the NFL wanted it. But, uh, yeah, uh, Dan Campbell has been very entertaining with, with his pregame speeches and what he's saying in practice and how just how much he cares for the players. And he's, uh, in, in this most recent episode, if, if the listeners watched it, it's, I mean, he's just a big dude. And he's talking to a tight end, giving him some tips, and he's like, poking over <laughs> this guy who's actually an active player on his team. And Dan Campbell looks like if he he could put on some pads and go out there and cause some damage there. Yeah, I certainly got the mentality for sure. You ever watch the Hard Knock series at all, Michael? Uh, no, no. Yeah. I, just an episode here or there. I, I did watch on uh, last year the Colts. I wanted anxious to see what they had to say after that Jacksonville game, watching that Jacksonville game. I thought that was kind of – so I had to watch one of that. But uh, – I just find that kind of contrived a little bit. You know, it, it is to a degree. It's like reality uh, TV. It's like just just give people alcohol and issues and let them go to town on each other. Um, because as we all know, it's the last 15 minutes of those shows where everything just blows up. Yeah, it's going to be. And here's the thing. The Panthers would have been a great hard knocks topic. Obviously, uh, you know, this is planned well ahead of time. And. But gosh, the Baker Mayfield Sam Darnold battle that would have been great TV. But that all came in a little too late before they could sh- uh, shift anything around. Maybe next year. Ian Castleberry writes for Barrett Sports Media, and he he is here with us Mondays talking Major League Baseball, Thursdays with their NFL Gold Nuggets. Uh, Ian, we can't thank you enough, my friend. Oh, thank you guys. Always enjoy talking to you. Likewise, have a great weekend. We'll catch up um, on Monday. Okay, thanks. You, you got it. Thank, all you. Right. thank you, Ian. See you, buddy. Here you have it, Ian Castleberry. Great to, always great to hear from Ian. Yeah, no kidding. He's sharp. Uh, Ian's appearance, by the way, is uh, presented by David Creaseman and D.C. Creaseman Jewelers. 